It's always a bummer seeing a talented actor exit an intriguing film and one that would likely benefit their career. But alas, it can't always be helped. And at least in the case of these 10 departures, the majority have already been replaced by some rather inspired substitutes, even if their names may not carry quite the same level of sway. Yet of course, fans will not be able to stop themselves from thinking what these following films would have looked like had the original casting choices panned out. Without further ado then, I am Gareth here from What Culture, and here are 10 actors who just quit huge movies. Number 10, Stephen Yeun, Thunderbolts. It was announced last February that Stephen Yeun had won a coveted role in the upcoming Marvel Cinematic Universe ensemble flick Thunderbolts. And though Marvel Studios kept Yeun's precise role under wraps, The Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman actually revealed that Yeun would be playing the Sentry in that film. I know, crazy. In the comics, the Sentry is pretty much a Superman-esque type of hero figure in the Marvel Universe, though he has one major liability. His powers are accompanied by a dark entity known as the Void, ensuring every heroic act he commits is counterbalanced by a rather horrific one. And while Marvel fans were understandably quite excited about the idea of Yon stepping into a film alongside the likes of Florence Pugh, David Harbour, Sebastian Stan, and so on, the actor apologetically revealed earlier this year that he had been made to drop out of this film due to scheduling conflicts that arose in the wake of all the strike stuff. Mere weeks later, however, the talented Lewis Pullman, the son of Bill, was actually announced as Yon's replacement in the film. And while not as buzzy a name as the Oscar-nominated Walking Dead star, he certainly got the acting chops to pull off this kind of role, so I am respectfully saluting that man. Now I want to know really quickly, what's the MCU project that you're most excited about coming up in the future? Is it the Thunderbolts film? Is it Deadpool 3? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 9, Andrew Garfield, Dr. Frankenstein. Guillermo del Toro's long gestating Netflix take on Mark Shelley's Frankenstein story sounds like as perfect a match between artist and the material as you're ever going to get. And so the project, unsurprisingly, has attracted a bevy of A-list stars. This initially included Andrew Garfield, who was set to star as Frankenstein's monster in the movie. Yet at the start of 2024, mere weeks before shooting was set to begin, it was announced that Garfield had been forced to drop out of the project due to more strike-induced scheduling conflicts. Had a bit of an impact this strike, didn't it? It's certainly a blow for fans of the pair who were eager to see them work together. Not to mention Garfield starring opposite Oscar Isaac, who was playing Dr. Bloody Frankenstein, but it did not take long for his replacement to be announced. Priscilla and Saltburn star Jacob Elordi was recently confirmed to be stepping in for Garfield as the monster. And given the enticing projects that the Australian actor has starred in recently, it's easy to believe that he'll give a performance worthy of the original casting. Number 8, Rachel Zegler, Paddington in Peru. The third Paddington movie began shooting this past summer, and due to production company Studio Canal not being a member of the Ampetipe, also known as the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, it sounds so grand, filming could continue in spite of the saga after a strike. While this left most of the movie's predominantly British cast unaffected, it did create an issue for American actress Rachel Zegler, who had been cast as Gina, the daughter of a riverboat captain known as Hunter, who was being played by Antonio Banderas. And this lot had just helped the Brown family during their journey to Peru. Filming began while Zegler headed back over to the US of A to join in with the strike. And this all resulted in her being replaced by the decidedly less known Carla Taus. While this part would have allowed Zegler to appear in a family-friendly film. This now is a massive win for Taos, who will get a major rise in profile on the back of appearing in Paddington 3. So best of luck to her. Number 7, Ryan Gosling, Wolfman. A reboot of Universal's classic creature feature, The Wolfman, was first announced back in 2014. You know, remember when they were trying to do that whole dark universe monster thing? It worked out really well. In May 2020, however, it was retooled as a separate project pitched by Ryan Gosling. With filmmaker Lee Wanell hired to co-write and direct this new take, no, as Wolfman. But last December, Gosling just suddenly dropped out as the leading man in this particular film, as did the previously hired director, Derek C. in France, though he would remain on the film as an executive producer. And who will be his replacement in this particular movie? The great Christopher Abbott, who has been killing it in a number of really cool projects over the last couple of years. He's appeared in Black Bear, Possessor, and Poor Things, a lot of good stuff this guy's doing right now. And he will now play the titular lycanthrope too. Abbott may lack the star sizzle of Gosling, but he's a fantastic 
fantastic actor and can definitely handle this kind of role. In the end, everything appears to have worked out pretty good for this, so I am excited. Number six, Pedro Pascal, Weapons. Zach Kreger became an overnight filmmaking sensation on the back of this absolutely horrifying movie known as Barbarian that dropped in 2022 and has been giving me nightmares ever since. And this ensured that every single studio in town were tripping over themselves to make sure that he did a project from their studio next to be like, there you go, just do something for us, please. And this project has turned out to be a little thing known as Weapons. And this is a multi-story horror film that has been compared to something like Magnolia. Though the particulars of the flick are being kept very much under wraps at moments of recording. But Pedro Pascal was confirmed to be starring in this movie last May. And though his departure has not been formally announced by anyone involved, industry insider Jeff Snyder did report at the start of the year that Pascal had definitely left the project. The reason for this, again, was just a simple case of scheduling conflicts. It just happens. It happens all the time. With Pascal definitely being one of the most in-demand actors on planet Earth right now, just look at that guy's IMDb page. He is working so much. There just wasn't really time to fit in something else. And it's a damn shame, to be honest, because it would have been awesome seeing him work with this kind of new, exciting director and seeing what kind of magic they could have created together. And given that Pascal's exit has not been officially confirmed by the studio or anybody involved in the movie right now, we don't actually know who's going to replace him in it either, so we will watch this space. Number five, Teresa Randall, Bad Boys 4. Believe it or not, a fourth Bad Boys movie was quietly shot last year and is due for release this summer. I know, who knew? And while the majority of the cast from threequel Bad Boys for Life will be returning, a memorable member of the ensemble actually will not be in Bad Boys 4. During the middle of filming last summer, it was announced that Teresa Randall, who'd played Marcus's wife throughout the first three movies, would not be returning. And there was no real reason given for why she actually exited. For the fourth film, the role will instead be played by Tasha Smith. And she's a solid replacement, even if it is a bit of a shame to see a notable character get recast at this late stage in a franchise. More to the point, if a fifth Bad Boys movie suddenly gets greenlit, then what does that mean for this role? Does it belong to Smith now, or what, what do we do? What do we do? As ever, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Number four, Barry Keoghan, Gladiator 2. Ridley Scott's recently wrapped Gladiator sequel will actually boast two major villains, and these are co-emperors Caracalla and Geta. I think that's how you pronounce it, that's what I'm going with. The former is still being played by Stranger Things star Joseph Quinn, while Barry Keoghan was actually set to play the latter role, which is apparently the bigger of the two. Keoghan was cast last March, though a few months later he suddenly dropped out in the summer. And why was that? Let me hear you, let me hear you. Why was that? Yep! scheduling conflicts. Again, again. And just like that, the world was robbed of seeing Kyogen just play a larger than life villain in the Ridley Scott epic. Boo! Boo, you pesky calendars. Shortly thereafter, Kyogen was confirmed to have been replaced by the White Lotus's Fred Heschinger. And while one might be tempted to see this particular personnel change as a bit of a downgrade, and that is no offence to Heschinger, given his solid acting CV, it's probably best to give him the benefit of the doubt and wish him the best in this particular scenario. Go and kill it, Heschinger. Not literally. Well, he is playing an Emperor, so I don't know. Number three, Benedict Cumberbatch, a complete unknown. In early 2020, it was announced that James Mangold, yep, that James Mangold, will be directing a Bob Dylan biopic. This will be known as a complete unknown and would be starring Timothy Chalamet, Chalamet, Chalamet as the titular star. The pandemic and scheduling issues have stopped the film from actually beginning filming yet, though Mangold and Chalamet have still committed to filming this project from March of this year. In fact, casting announcements have been ramping up for the movie elsewhere. With Benedict Cumberbatch, cast in the film back in May as Pete Seeger. And this singer was one of Dylan's earliest and most vocal backers, I'll have you know. Once again, scheduling conflicts forced Cumberbatch to back out of the movie in the end, though. I was recently confirmed that Edward Norton had stepped in in the role instead, and that is not a bad replacement, is it? Cumberbatch certainly seemed like a fine fit for what looked like a rather juicy supporting role in the movie. Though, if you're going to be replaced by anyone, Edward Norton is always a pretty darn fine pick. Number two, Jenna Ortega, Scream 7. To say that Spyglass Media group absolutely screwed the pooch when it comes to the making of Scream 7 would be a bit of an understatement. Though the sequel once seemed like the easiest slam dunk possible, they opted to fire lead actress Melissa Barrera on the back of her social media comments supporting Palestine during the Israeli Hamas war, which reactionary Spyglass interpreted as being anti-Semitic. And just a day later, back in November when this all happened and fans were wondering what was going to happen with this movie going forward, her co-star and Scream's sister Jenny Ortega then left the project 
Entertainment 2. Though it was initially reported that Ortega left the project due to scheduling conflicts with her Netflix series Wednesday, additional reports indicated that it was actually due to a salary dispute with Spyglass. All while fans speculated that Ortega was nevertheless showing silent solidarity with Barrera. Regardless of the reason though, Ortega's departure from Screen 7 was a huge blow, wasn't it? Which now, without either of its leading ladies, is in a pretty weird and difficult spot going forward. Will the filmmakers shift the focus towards the two remaining members of the core four siblings, Chad and Mindy? Or go groveling back to Neve Campbell with a big old truck full of money? Yet again, we're just gonna have to wait and see, aren't we? Number one, Ayo Edebiri, Thunderbolts. Because one disappointing Thunderbolts recast just wasn't enough, almost exactly a year after the Bears' terrific Ayo Edebiri was cast in an unspecified role in the movie, she's had to drop out because of, wait, it's just co yeah, uh, it, scheduling conflicts. Again, of course, surprise. Reports indicate that this is once again due to the knock-on effect of the strikes that happened, like we've mentioned it a few times in this video already. This has most likely led to the shooting of Thunderbolts clashing with her shooting on the third season of The Bear, which, like Thunderbolts, is set to begin principal photography during this spring. With Edebiri's departure, though, a replacement was swiftly announced. Geraldine Viswanathan, who's been a rising star ever since her breakout role in 2018's hilarious film Blockers. Again, while Viswanathan isn't quite as high-profile a casting pick as Edebiri, she is nothing if not a strong substitute. Still, a single MCU movie having to deal with two pretty big substitutes at this point in the game, just a couple of weeks apart, is certainly less than ideal. As for who Edebiri was set to play, I hear you ask? Rumours have consistently pointed to her playing Songbird in the movie, but I'm gonna say it again, we're gonna have to wait and see, aren't we? I just want to stress one more time though that every single person who has replaced an actor in this list, we're wishing you all the best, we want you to smash it, acting's hard, filmmaking's really hard too, so yeah, just give them some slack and send them some good wishes. Bye bye!